Greetings, this is Jim Lindsay. This is a lesson over input. And as you can see from the Blackboard, you know, from the Blackboard page right there in front of you, this, this uh, material comes from chapter four of your textbook. And I wanted to just give you a, a little bit of an explanation of what to do with this, this page. There are several links on this page as you look at this. Um, as you scroll down, there's like, what close to uh, 10 links on this page how do you use this well this is what you do you're right here you're starting right there and here are the PowerPoint slides that I'm about to utilize so if you want the PowerPoint slides I'm going to use you can download them from right there you can print out handouts and take notes whatever you want to do with them um, but these movies you see right here basically one two three four these four links um, at certain points during the 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 PowerPoint presentation, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you to pause and then go out and play these movies and watch them. Um, these come from a variety of different websites. Some of these are like this one, for example, is a uh, documentary. And if you look at this documentary, um, if, as you start to play it, um, you, you'll note that you can basically, you know, go to specific points in the movie. In this particular clip, all I want you to do is watch two minutes. And I want you to watch from the 26 minute 30 second mark to the 28 minute 30 second mark. So if you look at this this video, as you can see, you can uh, find it. And if you look over here, it tells you where you are in the video. It's about right about here. So right about at this point, um, as you start to play that movie, um, watch it for two minutes. And so, um, and, and likewise, you have one over uh, radio frequency identification, which is right here, one from GoPro, another from over biometric access controls, which is right here. And for those three videos, the, the RFID through the biometric access controls, you watch the whole thing for those videos, and they're short. Um, but you'll see that uh, these links are available for you on the Blackboard site. So please uh, open Blackboard, have that that tab of your browser open as you're um, watching the movie and I ask you to pause that's where you find those links that you'll need now um, I'll switch over to the PowerPoint presentation and get us started okay I'm in the PowerPoint presentation now and you'll see that the look of the presentation has changed quite a bit from what you've seen in the preceding three uh, presentations that I've made in my chapter one two and three presentations were one I made from scratch I'm using some slides that came from the uh, the textbook publisher, and I've modified them to uh, to my needs. But these these slides are a little bit more wordy. Um, if you're using the PowerPoint slides as a study aid, you know you, know, you might find these um, helpful, um, as there are you know bullet points in here which which uh, spell out some things. But uh, this chapter, as you can tell, covers input and output. Uh, with a computer and a, a computer system can uh, has to have those components so we can get data we want to uh, analyze into the system and then the, the system has to have a way to get feedback back to us and that's what input and output are for. Um, when you first hear that you're going to be learning about input and out to output devices you may be like oh my goodness that's going to be so boring. Um, but it's not, and and I hope you'll you'll come away from these this lesson and the output lesson, um, sort of excited. This is actually one of the the mo one of the more interesting uh, chapters in a book. I mean, it, I think it's a good book altogether. It's a, it's a good book, but um, the the content or, or the things that you can study about input and output can be really engaging. And so um, I hope you'll take that away from this lesson. Now, uh, the most common forms of input, of course, are going to be your keyboard and your, your mouse. And I'm not going to talk to you about keyboards or mice. Um, you do read about them. As you read this chapter, the initial part of it is, you know, talks about them. What is a keyboard for? Um, and obviously, you, you, you know what that is because you've used a keyboard. You know, you type letters and numbers and characters and things like that. And you can get that data into the system. Um, it talks about different forms of keyboards. Um, and as you get to tablet devices, you'll see that there are like, you know, uh, attachable,
keyboards that you can attach to to those sorts of uh, devices but we're not going to spend time during this lecture talking about those you can read about that and learn about that um, the facet of, of pointing devices that I do want you to um, to uh, I, that I do want to spend some time with you talking about it or basically directing you to watch something about is this right here and I'd like for you to learn about the origins of where pointing devices specifically the mouse where that came from because from a, a, a business standpoint um, this is a great story um, and this ties into system software and we'll talk about this more in detail um, in the in, in chapter 5 when we talk about system software because the the companies involved in this uh, basically you have um, Xerox you have Apple you have Microsoft you have a, um, a number of other Washington State based um, technology companies that are all sort of part of this whole drama um, uh, there were a lot of losers in this story um, and then some really big winners and so um, this picture right here is basically to prompt you to go ahead and, and watch there's a, a video I've titled pointing and touch devices and that's the one where you watch the two minutes from the 2630 to the 2830 mark watch that video if you would please and then come back so um, pause this and we'll see you in a few minutes okay hopefully you you watch that video and you uh, you enjoyed that you know you got to hear directly from Steve job which which I think is really cool um, and in those that whole uh, series of, of that whole documentary there were a number of, of uh, episodes within that whole documentary series and you got to hear from like people that, that basically built the whole the whole personal computer revolution the whole process you get to hear from all of those those major players it's a very interesting and uh, really cool uh, documentary series um, but these are some questions you see right here you know what is a graphical user interface how does a that graphical user interface differ from the command line um, how are Apple and then the rest of the, the computer industry how are they, they benefactors of the implementation of these things and and again this does tie into uh, chapter 5 material but um, the mouse is a a uh, a big big innovation for personal computers now, I'm going to do one thing I'm going to uh, pause this I'm going to meet you at the desktop I'll be back in just a moment okay I'm at the desktop of my computer and what I would ask you to do uh, in a classroom is say okay hey you just learned about the mouse you learned about the pointing devices um, and that's all part of this graphical user interface you know, I'm moving my mouse around you guys can see that on the screen in front of you um, this type of system where there, there's something like a mouse where you move it with on an x-axis and a y-axis and you can select things like icons and you can um, move stuff around your screen this is the graphical user interface that was uh, described and, and, and talked about in that video um, the the user interface that was was used before this was the command line interface it's, it's referred to as a CLI Charlie Lima India command line interface um, in we still have that you can still use that um, to get to that basically you would um, uh, uh, you, uh, hold on one second. I had to kind of think about that for a minute because I'm on Windows 8.1 now instead of Windows 7 which I've been using forever um, basically on Windows 8.1 what you do is you just click on your little uh, Windows button to get to uh, the, the start screen and you've got the little down arrow which can take you to like all your different you know apps and the um, over here in the Windows system area you have this command prompt and you can click on that to start the command line um, if you had a Windows 7 machine or Windows 98 or Windows 2000 you just click down here and then in the run run box you could type CMD um, that's short for command again CMD Charlie Mike Delta and it would bring this box up and this this box that you see is the command line interface you see it's called a command prompt right there but with this you can do all, all, all sorts of things that um, you know help you to manage the computer so let's do do something two ways first of all I'm gonna say hey how would you look up the the contents of um, what's in a folder 
And so like, for example, let's say you wanted to find out what's in the documents folder of the computer you're working with. Well, if you use the mouse, it'd be easiest to just go, let's just use this, uh, this, this summer folder as an example. If I wanted to find out what's in that, I just double click it and it brings up this um, dialog box and says, hey, inside of this, there are some pictures and there's a folder. Well, that's really easy. You can, you can also find out what's inside something by using this command line and the command that you would use for that is something called dir and that means directory you know give me a directory of what's in here and as I, I I hit enter and I'll make this box a little bit larger but basically there's are a bunch of folders inside of this gym folder and if I wanted to change directories let's say I wanted to go to the user folders instead of the gym folder I would have to change directories and then drop down and that would take me down to users um, so this command line interface is that's what was on com computers when I took college classes at Western and I did not like computers um, it was I, I, I had my bachelor's degree and uh, was I worked in business for a number of years um, when I went back to get a, a master's degree that's when I started to really work with information technology and at that point then the graphical user interface to come out and had really taken off and everything was a lot simpler but um, back when it was all command line interface days, I really didn't enjoy the computers. That's a huge deal for, for business. And so let me go ahead and close this. If you have this open, if you want to get out of this, you just type the word exit, E-X-I-T, and it closes that up. I'm going to go back to, to Blackboard. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, uh, PowerPoint. I'll meet you back here in just a second. Okay, so I'm back in the uh, PowerPoint presentation. But... Um, you know the, this question of like what is that graphical user interface well it's this this system of using a pointing device like a mouse that allows people to just click on things and and you can open things create things and so on and it's so easy to use and why is that great well it opens up computing to a whole new group of people um, you know if we were in a traditional classroom and there were 30 people in there probably about three of them would have experience with the command line interface and so if I'm a business person, I'm trying to sell things to other people, I would much rather be able to sell it to 30 people as opposed to three. And so having this graphical user interface as, a, as the, the way that people interact with the device, that makes it super, super uh, friendly and much more uh, sellable. And so that's why this graphical user interface was such a big deal. And so you got to hear from uh, Steve Jobs, um, when we get to again to chapter five with the with the uh, systems uh, software chapter, we'll we'll investigate the ex, you know the specifics of uh, all the different lawsuits that went back and forth and and all of that because again there were some uh, big time winners and, and and a lot of losers that came out of that uh, that that business venture um, over a period of years and it's pretty cool. Okay, next in the chapter it's. Um, continues to talk about some more of the basically getting into the touch devices and read about these these um, these systems where you have like the gesture recognition where the guys basically uh, through this little device you see right here he's able to use his fingers to you know expand and move and manipulate a screen based on what he's doing with the finger gestures here you know being recognized by this thing um, there are video games which allow that I've forgotten the name of the I think it's the connect box that's part of uh, one of the gaming systems where your actual posture allows you to play games like you know like downhill skiing games and gymnastics and stuff like that um, these are input devices and so um, input is definitely way more than just mice and keyboards it's you know these kind of deals where you can touch the screen like you've got uh, you know on your on your smartphone or this kind of deal where you have a gaming system like a Wii where it has there's basically a gyroscope inside of the Wii controller and as you move it up and down left and right forward and backwards um, it senses that and gyroscopes came from uh, the technology when people were developing rockets and so um, this 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 uh, maturing of, of things like gyroscopes and those becoming so cheap that we can now put those into a hundred and fifty dollar gaming system I mean that's really cool and so we're getting to take advantage of this technology that you know even 40 years ago was was like uber uber expensive and was being used at NASA so pretty cool stuff and and, and again a lot of this really cool input stuff is uh, is uh, stuff that basically had, was 
you know, not too long ago, soup so expensive that there's no way that the regular personal computer user could uh, could enjoy it. So take a look at and read about these these like these touch devices, um, these uh, these these pens and styluses and things like that. The one I want to uh, just mention um, a little bit more about is basically this one right here, and this is one of the uh, the touch tables that is down at the uh, the National Civil Rights Museum down in. Uh, in Jackson, I'm sorry, Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I was down there last year, and uh, I remember this exhibit. This was a very powerful uh, exhibit at that museum. And, and essentially, when you get to this point of the uh, of the museum, um, the, the National Civil Rights Museum, by the way, is it's um, it's in the it's on the property where the Lorraine Motel is, and that's where Martin Luther King was shot and killed. And when you get there on the outside, they've preserved it. It looks exactly like the day that, um, you know, I, the day when, when Martin Luther King was shot. And so it looks like you, you feel like you've gone back in time. They have the several blocks um, blocked off so you can't drive cars there. And so you walk up and you see this, this uh, you know, 1960s hotel and you go like, man, this is like, you know, back in time. And you enter down on a ground floor and you basically kind of go down and as you kind of wind your way through this museum, um, you're about three quarters of the way when you get to this exhibit, but at the end of it, you actually end up at that room uh, that Martin Luther King stayed at and, and the adjoining room where uh, when he walked out on the balcony, he was shot. So it's a very powerful um, museum. Uh, if you ever get the opportunity to go there, it's, it's in Memphis, Tennessee, I encourage you to go. But this particular exhibit, um, I really liked it, and 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 what where I stood was basically where this this young man is standing right here. Um, at this table, what you learned about was um, during the nineteen the late nineteen sixties during the Vietnam War, um, there was a lot of discord within the United States and, and um, uh, racial tension. And um, one of the people that is is highlighted in this exhibit is Martin. Uh, I'm sorry, Muhammad Ali. Um, from Louisville, Kentucky, you know, that's one of the reasons it kind of jumped out to me is because I've I've grown up learning about Muhammad Ali and, and going to Louisville and seeing Muhammad Ali Boulevard and all that kind of stuff and um, So at this table what you do like each one of these people at the table is interacting with um, a different sort of, of, of basically output that's being um, uh, Put out by speakers on this bar right here, and so this guy's hearing something different than this guy, and then this guy, and this guy, and the speakers are, are pointed in such a way that it doesn't bother you or distract you that the guy next to you is listening to something different, and it's like a big iPad. And so as you you zoom in or poke things or, or move things around the table, what you see is a totally different experience than the guy next to you or the or the lady next to you. And so um, I learned all this stuff about Muhammad Ali and his his experience uh, during that period of time in America, and, and uh, I really came away learning a lot. And um, and I think a big, big part of it was basically because of this this touch screen that was used at this exhibit and the way that it allowed me to um, chase down stuff that was, you know, really grabbing my attention. And, you know, because it interested me doesn't mean it necessarily would have interested, you know, this, this lady or this man or this young lady over here. You know, it's something that spoke to me because again, I saw Muhammad Ali and I said, oh, there's Muhammad Ali. And so I think I, I learned something really valuable that day and this was a big part of it. And so this is the implementation of touch technology as a form of input and an output from the uh, resulting video and audio and stuff that uh, was played back based on my input. And so this is just uh, another example of uh, the museum industry taking technology, implementing it in a way that uh, I think is pretty powerful. Okay, now in the PowerPoint presentation, I'm going to go ahead and jump several slides. Um, at this point, I believe I'm about slide nine, and I'm going to go on back to about slide 14. Um, the, uh, you have this PowerPoint presentation, and I hope that these slides you're seeing here, they're helping you. These all show different uh, means of inputting data um, through either pointing devices, touch devices, scanners, readers, digital cameras, these sorts of different things. Um, they're all different mechanisms which allow you to get data into the system and I want you to read about those and um, it's very 
It's clearly written, so it's very self-explanatory. But when we get to this example of barcodes right here, the next technology that's mentioned is something called RFID, radio frequency identification. And this stuff is, this is awesome. I love RFID. It's not new, um, but the, the way that people have thought to implement this technology in so many different industries in so many interesting ways is just very, very cool to me. Um, the way that this works, there's basically a, a bar, an RFID tag, and you'll see that there's, you know, they can be about as, you know, kind of big, or they can be really small. They can be small as a grain of rice. Um, they can be kind of, you know, as big as a brick, um, and they're they're used in um, the transportation industry. They're used in pharmaceutical industry. They're used in um, retail uh, locations. It's used in, in logistics where you're keeping track of things like uh, packages and, and pallets and things like that. Um, you've got a guy on a lift ticket over here. Basically, when he gets his lift ticket, there's a little sticker that he puts on the, the zipper of his coat. So the 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 ski lift basically recognizes, hey, this guy has paid his money and he can he can ride the ski lift, that kind of stuff. And so, really cool technology. Um, I have a, a movie. This is one of the movies I wanted you to watch. Um, so please watch this RFID um, movie. Um, the audio on it is a little bit poppy. And so as you watch it, at some, certain points it might pop a little bit. So you may want to turn it down just a little bit or just uh, at a certain point it kind of gets a little bit louder. And I apologize for that, but it's a good movie. So um, other than the audio being a little bit uh, hokey, the content's really good. So check out this RFID movie, and we'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, based on what you've read in a book, based on what you've heard about in that movie, I would, if we were in a classroom, I'd say, hey, let's stop and let's have this discussion. You know, explain what RFID is and how it works. How does it differ from barcode scanning? Um, you learn that clearly from uh, from the movie. It's also talked about in the book. Um, you know, how is RFID used in these different industries? And I'd ask you to be thinking about that. So that's one of the skills you have to have, I think, as a college graduate. You have to be able to read about something hear about something and then think about it and then think about how it's going to be implemented into different situations um, certainly into your own industry um, in a in a useful you know in a useful way um, you know um, when we get to uh, the output lesson and we talk about 3d printing in particular I mean the, the the application of 3d printing to medicine in particular to me is just astounding it's like wow um, you know that that doctor's ability that thought of how to use 3d printing to do like organ transplants is like man what a smart dude because he not only knows medicine and he knows about organ transplants he knows about you know the human body and all that sort of stuff but he also knows enough about technology to think hey i might be able to use that to solve my problem over here in this totally different industry and so that's one of the skills i want you to be able to to take away from from college for the rest of your life that's something that you should be able to do. So this is a question, or these are questions that I hope you'd be able to, to answer based on what you've heard and read so far. Okay, our next big sort of input that I wanna to mention to you, uh, encourage you to learn about here is something called biometric um, input. And basically biometric, you can see the word right there. Um, bio means life and metric means to measure. And biometrics is when you have um, a computer or a device basically measures some sort of physical characteristic of a of a person or a thing and then identify it accordingly. Um, really easy examples to point out for you are things like fingerprint readers. Um, this is a laptop computer and this is a cell phone and on both of these if you just swipe your finger across that little reader or right there the, uh, the device can say oh you're Jim or you're Tom or you're Susie and then let you into the system without having to type a whole bunch of um, passwords and, and things like that. Um, I have a, a, um, a movie for you that the next slide here is basically um, a movie that talks about using biometrics to do uh, access control to, to locations like office, office buildings or, or sensitive areas within office buildings. Um, they're they're used all over the place now, and um, 
they're just getting better and better. But I, this biometric input is a it's a form of computer input. I think it's really cool stuff. You know, you, you um, before you watch the movie, let me just mention two or three different ways that that you can biometrically be identified by a computer system. It can recognize uh, two different ways. It can recognize you two different ways through your eye. Um, this picture right here, this shows you this pretty part of your eye right here. This is called the iris, and it's the colored part. So like when someone has green eyes or blue eyes or, or, or brown eyes, um, this colored part is the iris. And there's a pattern to that, to your eye, that is unique to you. And when you basically look at an iris scanner, it looks at your eye, it takes a picture, and it, and it records in a database, it basically records what your iris looks like. And so if you come to use the computer and you lean into the iris scanner, it takes a picture of it. If it's not you, you know, your next door neighbor or, um, or identity, identity scammer so-and-so sitting down trying to pretend to be you, they're not going to be able to get through because their iris is not the same as your iris. Um, in the back of your eye, there's something called a retina. Um, if you've ever taken a picture of somebody, and they get those red eyes, you know, it looks like the little devil eyes when you take a picture. What you're seeing is the retina. Um, what happens is light flashes off the back of that, those blood vessels and, and veins back there in the back of your eye, and you're seeing that in the picture. The, that red, the, that red you're seeing is the the, the blood pattern, the, the, the blood vessels and stuff back there. And so, with a retinal scanner, what it does instead of looking at the front of your eye, the iris part, it basically looks back there, and it looks at the pattern of veins and vessels. And that is also unique, and so that's a second way that the eye can be used to biometrically um, identify you. Um, the iris, you know, looking at the iris is very uh, non-invasive because it doesn't have to like you don't have to put your eye like right on a scanner and all that kind of stuff. Um, the retina scanners are more like uh, they they are invasive. That's where if you've ever had like a glaucoma test when you go to the eye doctor and they kind of put that puff of air in your eye, like oh you know that's it's not real comfortable. But the, that's like a, what a retinal scan would be like, and, but they're really accurate. And so if you're, let's say you're working at the CIA or the NSA or something, you're trying to, you know, limit um, access to, you know, specific areas, like a retinal scan might be something that's appropriate for that. Um, you have palm prints that are unique. You have um, people's facial geometry, basically the space between, you know, from cheek to cheek or the height of your cheeks compared to your eyes or the distance from your chin to your nose, that's all unique. And so cameras can look at you and, and based, you know, based on what's in the database, it can say, hey, this is Jim or this is not Jim. And so really cool stuff and biometrics can be used to uh, really help control access to specific areas. So um, now, pause if you would, go watch that movie, and we'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that that movie. Um, here are some questions that you should be able to answer based on what you've heard, what you've read, what you saw in that video. And so, you know, these are, you know, critical thinking questions, just like uh, I posed the questions I posed to you about RFID. Here are some critical thinking questions about um, biometrics. A um, couple more forms of input I wanted to, to bring to your attention, uh, mainly uh, the use of video, um, video is everywhere. Right? So we we watch videos on our phone. We have vine, funny vines that we watch. There's all sorts of, uh, you know, BuzzFeed kind of stuff people watch. You know, constantly. There's YouTube's videos. There's Netflix. I mean, we're constantly using um, our our mobile devices to consume video. As such, you're going into business and you're going to be trying to promote and market businesses. A lot of you will be, um, and so you need to be able to you know capture video um, edit video at least in a basic sense and that's what we're doing in this class we're going to teach you how to do basic video editing um, you know using YouTube but you know one of the ways that you can get video is through video cameras like GoPro and so what I'd like for you to do next is uh, just real quickly this is a real short video it's just over two minutes long um, Watch this video about this guy and this pelican, and then come back. So I'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, and so 
I hope you watched that video. Um, you know, this guy is uh, obviously interested in assisting animals like this pelican that have been displaced, you know, through natural disasters and stuff like that. And so, um, by hooking up the GoPro to the thing's beak and then getting out there and showing people, hey, this is this bird I found, he's able to basically pull on your heartstrings and, and help raise awareness and maybe even money to help uh, fund causes that will help things like, you know, these animals. And so, um, I think you're going to be really uh, well served to have at least some sort of knowledge of video and, and how to uh, to manage it and then implement it in your websites and in your social media as you go forward as a business person and so I think it's just a fundamental skill um, all right and our last form of input is basically audio input and I don't have a video for you on this one um, you use this already I'm, I'm pretty certain um, if any of you are using any of the newer iPhones, I'm sure you've used Siri, and uh, with this audio input, you can do, you can give uh, voice commands to your com to your, your your device and basically say, hey, give me directions to, you know, Centennial Mall, or give me directions to 123 Alpha Street, and you know, through that voice recognition, that audio input, the computer can then respond accordingly and give you output and feedback that's useful, and so. Um, that's that's something that you guys have grown up with more or less and really gotten quite uh, comfortable with. Um, you can also use this with dic dictation software. Um, if you go into an industry where you're trying to uh, you know, create documents, like written documents, as opposed to having to, to write or type everything, you can just basically talk to the computer it can, and it, you can train it to uh, understand your voice and then it can output documents for you um, and, and operate the computer as you wish and pretty cool stuff and so um, here are some industries listed on the slide in front of you this would be my critical thinking question for you for your digital or video input and audio input with a system and so that is the uh, that is the 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 basically the completion of what I want to talk to you about with input but um, I think this is a, is a really neat chapter. Um, uh, we, we haven't covered output. We'll cover that in a different lesson. But um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you'll, you'll view input as, a, as, a, you know, as an exciting area, an exciting field as opposed to a boring one. But um, thanks for your time and attention.